All right, we'll uh, jump right into it. So, um, Bachelor Nigra, um, these are uh, straight Nigra, not Kali. Uh, Kali we have at uh, Long Road, but we do have straight Nigra. Uh, you can see there uh, pushing well past uh, 60 inch, uh, getting into that 72 inch range in a uh, seven gallon container. Um, <clears throat> these are, uh, this is a process uh, that we're using from a vendor um, where we're buying this as multiple cuttings rooted into a pot and then shifting that pot up. So uh, you can see here how well that did, how full that is. You know, it's a multi stem. Um, we were extremely happy. Uh, we didn't have to do any staking or anything with it, which was great. Uh, just a soft trim in the spring and we were able to produce and this crop is cookie cutter. So it's, it's right down the line. So we got 600 of those available and uh, uh, well, I have to double check that. Um, I think we still have some stuff available. So we'll see what happens there. So, um, all right, new gen. <coughs> um, so we have uh, two and three on the freedom. Uh, so you can see there, uh, you have two different sizes, you know, um, if it was me spending money out there, I would definitely snap up these two gallons. I think on this one, it's a great size. Um, the three is a little bigger, uh, but uh, look at that two gallon package and you're going to get a cheaper price. So uh, that's definitely my buy of the day. Uh, that's what I would really push you towards to make somebody really, really happy. They're going to get a, a bigger plant uh, at a lower price but uh, we still have availability on these. Um, I would think these would go pretty quick, uh, especially with as short as the boxwood market is out there. Um, just keep cautioning people not to wait too long. Uh, independence, a little bit different animal, <clears throat> globe form, um, more compact, but uh, same thing here. Uh, you look at the sizing on the two gallon and the pot, um, not quite as big as the freedom, but still a nice uh, full, plant in a two. Uh, the three gallon uh, definitely has a lot of wow factor to it. Very big. Um, but, you know, we have availability on both of these. I think they would be happy with, with either one. So uh, uh, keep pushing these new gens as uh, definitely an alternative. Uh, you know, again, boxwood blight, big deal with this thing. Uh, it has great resistance to that. So that's why we uh, Brought them on board. We want to continue to promote them for that. Uh, Kim Sippers mops. So uh, mops are a little tight out there. We just wanted to show you the three gallon crops that we have. Um, you know, we put on there for your subbing, you know, sub for a three. This is why we put that on there to sub. You can see the size. These aren't cheater twos. So uh, we don't have a huge amount. Um, and quite frankly, with where you were on your request, uh, with your oversold, there was just enough twos to cover that. Um, so hopefully you can capture all that, uh, those sales, if they're a little worried about the size, here's the photo, uh, this is what they're going to get. So hopefully they can, uh, they can use that as a, as a seamless substitution and not have any fears about that. Deer Villa Kodiak Black, <clears throat> you know, Kodiak Orange um, seems to be uh, the one of choice out there. Uh, you know, I tell you, Kodiak Black is is a really nice one as well. Um, you know, the people I think like that that orangey cast to it. Uh, but Kodiak Black uh, is a great grower, very tough plant. Um, I think it's a great sub for orange. You know, it's it's all in the same programs. Um, they just kind of divided them out as they were doing the breeding a little bit, but. Uh, Great contrast in color on the leaves. You do get yellow flower. You know, Deravilla is really not particularly known for the flower. I mean, some people may go after it, but it's very, Deravilla, very, it's very sparse across the plant when it flowers. Um, it does show up very well when it's blooming because it has a darker foliage. Uh, it doesn't last very long. Usually people don't notice it that much. The great thing about Deravilla is, um, that they are deer resistant. And in most parts of the country, they are considered natives. Um, and also the flowers, uh, you know, can uh, be a little bit of a pollinator, but like I said, they're, they're very short-lived flowers. So uh, uh, 
they, they, they do uh, lend to the pollinators for a short period of time. Uh, night glow is another one. <clears throat> so this one, a little bit different program. Blooming easy, you can see night glow is dark. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's different than uh, Kodiak Black. Kodiak Black has the, the, the foliage and then it tends towards a dark green. Uh, this one here is definitely the reds, uh, dark reds, burnt red color. Uh, that pretty much uh, permeates through the entire plant. Um, so we have really good availability on this one. Um, so this is uh, a good substitution. You know, you just gotta keep pushing on the subs for Kodiak Orange. Um, hydrangea, <coughs> um, lava lamp flare. Uh, this is uh, also uh, in the Bloom and Easy program. Um, it has a really big pinnacle type flower, um, very long um, interlacing. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's a great showy flower. It presents very well, but it has really sturdy stems. So, and it's extremely hardy. Um, you can push this up into zone three. So uh, we've talked about this before. Uh, we got great sizing on these twos. Uh, there's 1500, uh, quick fire fab. Um, so we go back into the proven winners. So, <clears throat> um, with quick fires, it seems like, uh, quick fires all of a sudden started turning on again. So, um, so we're in uncharted territory with sales volume on, uh, quick fire, uh, and little quick fire. So what we did was we wanted to show you, um, you know, quick fire and quick fire fab. Um, and, and give you a, a little education on what they are. So um, the uh, the photo in the center, Cheryl, that's uh, that's, a fab. that's fab in the center. Yeah. Okay, and uh, you know you can see they're they're very similar. Quick fire fab. One of the reasons they came out with it was uh, it has a little bit sturdier stems. Um, it's it's still the same bloom time as quick fire. Um, you know, you can kind of put this against little quick fire and quick fire. It's, it's not as small as little quick fire, but because it has thicker stems, um, it holds up a little better. Um, you know, we're splitting hairs here. Uh, so anyways, long story short, quick fire fab is a perfect substitution for quick fire. Um, they're going to be nothing but happy by using it. I think People are a little confused what quick fire fab is. Um, it's just they did a little more selecting with quick fire to uh, tighten up the grade on this plant here. So, and you can see there the you know from the center photo that's the that that's the fall crop here, uh, that seven thousand number you see there. So we got plenty of these. You oversold on your quick fire and your little quick fire. So I think it's just a little bit of educating out there. Um, to get them to just switch over to the fab. Um, I think they're going to be very happy with it. I think it's just, it's a different name and people just got to get used to it. So, so uh, that's what's going on there. If you have any questions about it or you hear of any concerns out there in the market, uh, by all means, uh, pass that along to us. But uh, hopefully we can uh, start moving some of these uh, and uh, capture those quick fire sales. We're still going to continue to do quick fire and little quick fire. Um, we just brought fab on, you know, I guess, uh, two, two out of three ain't bad. So we brought three new ones, you know, three basic new ones on that year. You know, we had limelight prime and quick fire fab and, uh, what was the other one? No, no it was before a little hottie. But anyways, um, you know, we brought the three on the, the other two were accepted very well. And then this one here, for whatever reason, people just stuck with quick fire. Uh, it could be because it's more of a, a landscape type plant. Uh, so just a little bit of education. Spirea pop rocks, petite. Um, so this is a dwarf alpinum type spirea. Um, and uh, it uh, uh, does uh, extremely well up north being its uh, alpinum parentage. Um, we used to grow straight alpinum a long, 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 long time ago, uh, then got away from it. Uh, this would be the only alpinum type spirea we would have in our catalog. Um, so uh, it's, it's a great plant. 
definitely, you know, for the Michigan and Chicago and wherever Colorado, you know, this thing is extremely tough. Um, Low mounding, smaller than Little Princess, uh, but still aggressive. You know, it's it's not going to sit there and be this little tiny thing forever. Uh, But it has really good compact. It's a it's a good rebloomer. Definitely one if you do give it a little light shear just to cut the dead flowers off, you'd probably get more of a rebloom, but it'll still rebloom. And you can see there that photo in the center was more towards the fall. Uh, we we're still getting some sporadic blooms late, late in the fall there. So great plant. Um, so let's see if we can keep pushing those. And my Gelia Electric Love. Um, last photo we have here. So this is a, a plant that's not super well known. I think it's getting out there. Again, you know, out in the nursery, to, to give you an idea what I do with Wygelia, out in the nursery, uh, a lot of them are on, under minimal heat, uh, more so because it doesn't like the changes in season. It tends to want to grow a little late in a container. And then if we get cold temps, it could really hurt it. And the same in the spring, if it tries to break, uh, which it will, you, you won't even see any kind of leaf come out, but it starts to flow sap and it can actually crack, split and die. Um, these here, these uh, blooming easy ones, Electric Love and uh, Stunner, um, we put these out in the tundra. So uh, they're much more adaptable, much hardier, uh, than uh, the, the current proven winter ones out there. You know, it makes sense that they were, they were developed up in Canada with northern breeding. So, uh, you know, if you have places that have concerns with Wygelia, it's really good to look into those couple blooming easy ones, um, especially if they say, hey, I kind of stay away from Wygelia because uh, some damage to this or that. They're not going to have that kind of issue with these plants. So that's the main reason we brought them on board. All right, Uh, I think that's all we got.